Welcome to the Fix Your Sciatica podcast, where we meet with experts and clients and discuss how to manage your sciatica and low back pain without the use of medications or surgery. I'm your host, Dr. Ashley Mack, and I'm a physical therapist as well as the founder of iFixYourSciatica.com, a go-to resource for pain management. So going off of the basis of interviewing other experts on how to manage pain, I stumbled across this physical therapist who has been presenting some really fantastic uh, content in LinkedIn, but also is a very published researcher on the function of the SI joint, the sacroiliac joint, and its role in pain itself. So in today's episode, I have Dr. Ryan Welton, who's a physical therapist, And today we're going to talk all about the SI joint and how it relates to pain. Ryan, thank you so much for your time today. I know that you're really busy seeing patients and taking care of people. And so um, tell us quickly a little bit more about yourself. What led you to where you're at today? Yeah, so I'm a physical therapist in the Tampa Bay area. Um, I'm originally from Massachusetts, the Boston area. And um, I went to Northeastern University, um, and I my experience is I worked for the New England Patriots. I worked in the NFL, and then I moved um, down to Florida, where I kind of worked in hospitals for a while, and then I uh, opened my own practice. So I've been in private practice for 14 years in the Tampa area. And I started to see uh, – so, so I do that, but then I also am like an inventor. I'm like a serial inventor type person. So um, I invent methods and I actually was just awarded a patent for a device. Um, So I have like seven, I have a bunch of, I don't know how many, I have a bunch of methods um, that my colleagues take, people like you, um, that get people instantly out of pain, usually 80, 90% of the time with the myofascial method. And then I develop protocols um, for uh, orthopedic issues. So, um, the, you know, I, I have a clinic where everybody's failed everything. I get 99% or almost everything, most of them. And I get 99% of those people better and 99% of them out of pain immediately. But the kicker is, is that I can train people to do it. So that's what I have going all around the world now in 40 countries and pro sports teams are using my methods and we're getting, uh, we're getting, they're getting those results too. So it's really, really cool. Um, but when I, when I, when I first opened my practice, I um I was I was doing things that were that were outside the box and a lot of it wasn't billable because I'm a very unconventional thinker. Um, not because I like to be different, because like I don't even see in my mind if somebody tells me like, hey Ryan, that thing you invented was that method was unconventional. I would be like I have to take a moment to like pause and be like, is it really? Like, cause I don't know because like all I see is healing. So like the the like the whole it's like my mind is an open book to whatever it presents. Like I don't copy myself off as like, oh, I'm this type of therapist. I'm this type of therapist. I'm whatever safe and whatever works, you know? Um, now, having said that, I, I opened my own practice and I started seeing because I couldn't take insurance because uh, just this geographical region, region and I was uh, inventing new methods um, that weren't billable. So, uh, I started seeing this population in here with this debilitating back and leg pain. And th- it was like one after another, after they're crying, they're telling me they're going to kill themselves, you know? And I'm sitting here and I'm like, I've been a therapist for like years before this happened. And I'm like, who are these people? Like, I've never, I never, even kn- I didn't even know people like this existed, you know? And I've been a therapist for years. And, um, and the, the reason why I didn't know they existed is because they stopped going to people like me because we put them on the treadmill, but they had shearing low back pain, you know, and then that that hurt them. So they gave up going to physical therapists. Chiropractors usually give them a little relief, uh, but it, they have to keep going back. So these people would come in over and over and then a, like a good like 10, 20 percent of them had been re- referred to psychiatrists for making it up in their head. Right. I just had a guy right now. Actually, I did a video. If it's on my YouTube channel, uh, if you go to Weld Methods on YouTube, I did a video of this guy who's referred to a psychiatrist. He um, he actually has a um, he had SI joint dysfunction, which I'm going to discuss today. He had SI joint dysfunction that was causing uh, his leg weakness and pain in his leg and his back. So um, he's one of those people. So it always like it typically presents the same way. Like these people, they come in and they say. I got this back pain. They go like this. They say, my back hurts. My back hurts here. My, I'm pointing, pointing my groins now. My groin, I have groin pain. 
or they have hip pain that nobody can figure out, or they got this thigh pain, numbness, weakness, or tightness, or it can go all the way down their leg, the side of the, into their ankle. And it can be knee pain too. I just put out a video of a guy that they did two knee surgeries on and he didn't actually need the surgeries because they didn't work. And they were going to do another one on him. He came to me and I opened up this joint in the back, the sacroiliac joint, boom, his knee pain was gone. So that what was that, that's what was wrong with him. So um, so anyway, so this joint that I want to discuss today mimics sciatica, okay? So if you're watching this, I'm holding up a couple of papers here. So this is my diagram of this. Um, so this right here is if you add uh, an SI joint dysfunction on the side where it's, it's, uh, it's black. And you can feel pain, numbness, weakness, or tightness in any of these areas that nobody can figure out. And if you if you're uh, if you're lucky enough to have a herniated disc, and I'm saying that sarcastically, if you're lucky enough to have a herniated disc, then they're going to tell you that's where it's from. It's sciatica. It makes sense, right? But if you are not lucky enough to have a herniated disc, you get sent to a psychiatrist because nobody can figure out what's wrong with you. In fact, I had a, a psychiatrist in the University of California Medical School email me and said, "Thanks for all your your talks and 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 uh, you know uh, teachings about SI joint." I fixed myself. I've suffered for years. And then I started checking my own psychiatric patients that were in there for like suicide and all that from chronic pain. He goes, guess what I found? I'm like, I know they're all in there. You know, so um, this is a bilateral. So both sides, you can present with any of these uh, numbness, pain, tightness, weakness in any of these areas with SI joint. So the actual issue is this, is this is your sacral iliac joint right here, right there. That's your joint. Okay, this is your pelvis here, your sacrum right here. So what what I found years ago is that I started seeing these SI joint patients and I'm like, what's wrong with these people? I'm really, really curious. Like, I don't just accept what people say, like, oh, they need to see a psychiatrist and I just write them off. Like, I don't accept that. Like, I needed to find out what was happening to these patients that were walking in here, barely walking in here, right? And I noticed that they all had the same misalignment, literally the same misalignment every time. Uh, just about. And what they had was an upslip and out flare. And so they had an upslip and an out flare of the, of the um, anominate. It's called the, on the pelvis. So I pulled it back down and I gapped it open and they would be like, yeah, no, my pain's gone in their SI joint or down their leg, or I would hold it open, um, hold the out flare open like that. And they would, and they would say, yeah, no, that my pain's gone out of my leg instantly. That's how I knew it wasn't sciatica. It was SI joint dysfunction. And that's how I figured out what caused SI joint dysfunction, which I published papers. You can find them on my website, wellmethods.com. I published papers on the root cause of SI joint dysfunction and the root cause of sacral torsion shear and anterior sacral tilt, which is what I'll discuss now. So they always have an upslip and or out flare of their pelvis, okay? But then when I have them uh, in that paper, I outline how I evaluate it. It's really complex the way that we learned it in school, the sacrum. It's like, you have to know, like, like I can't make that diagnosis. Like, and I do this, this is all I do for a living is basically this with back pain. And um, so I made it easy. So all you have to know is which thumb drops when the person does a prone press up test. If their glutes are relaxed, you can see that your left thumb almost always drops. In fact, I've only seen five cases where my right thumb dropped, which tells me that they have a torsion of their sacrum. So when your sacral, sacrum torsions, you can get buttock pain here along the sides and here, and then you can get pain in here, achiness across your back, sheer, uh, uh, it can actually refer up into the upper vertebrae like this, and um, or shearing pain uh, at the base of the spine. So people with this condition, now if you're listening to this podcast, if you identify these symptoms, you most likely have it because I've deduced that this is the most common cause of back pain that people are aware of, but they don't realize how prevalent it is. And I say that because almost everybody's failed everything that walks in here and I get them all out of pain immediately, pretty much. Um, so um, so the the SI joint in the sacral can can rotate and then it can also anterior tilt like that, okay? So I have two patients right now with an anterior sacral tilt like that, okay? So that causes a shearing pain. The symptoms of all these, of this whole issue is um, they say it hurts to roll over in bed. That's really common because they're shearing out of aligned SI joints. 
It hurts to um, go from sitting to standing after I sit for a while. It hurts to wait, get out of bed in the morning. That's mechanical pain. Um, hurts to sit on certain surfaces. Uh, those are like the four biggest complaints that they have. Um, and they have all these mysterious symptoms that no, if they don't have an MRI that shows a herniated disc, they get told they're, you know, need to go see a psychiatrist, you know, it's crazy. So uh, what do I do about it? What I recommend to the people listening is, is it, now if you read my papers that I published on it, it looks easy. It, there, there are four exercises for SI joint dysfunction. Having said that, it is not as easy as it looks. Um, and there's a lot of troubleshooting with it. So what I do is I describe in that paper, you can stretch, you stretch muscles here. So you have an upslip and an outflare causing the SI joint dysfunction. So you pull it back down and I gap it open with my hands to confirm the diagnosis and relieve their pain. And then what I do is I stretch muscles in here, allow this to start to gap like the lumbar paraspinal muscles and the piriformis muscle. Okay. Allow this to start to gap, strengthen a muscle that attaches here. Okay, called the gluteus medius to pull down the upslip. Okay, and then strengthen a muscle that attaches here at the pubic bone, the adductor group, which, when it's strong enough, will go like this and gap it open, down, open, and then the SI pain should go away. As well as, if it's caused by SI joint, you'll you'll see this go away too. Okay, um, now most people have a sacral dysfunction as well, so they usually just have a, a tilt this way. So it wrote my left thumb. When they press up, drops, okay? I think it's switched on Zoom. Sometimes they invert things. Uh, my left thumb drops on their sacrum. So I push it back down, okay? And that confirms my diagnosis if I relieve their pain immediately and their, their shearing pain at the base of their spine is gone, okay? And then um, in rarer cases, there's an anterior sacral tilt I discussed in that paper where you can push like this to confirm that. So the other day I had this patient that I got like almost out of pain, but I couldn't get her totally out of pain. And I'm like, maybe this is an anterior sacral tilt, which isn't that common. And it's shearing at the base of the spine right here. So what I did is I pushed right here and had her press up, like she was in a prone press up test, like a press up like a cobra. And she had the pain there and I pushed down like that. And then the pain went away. And, and that told me that she had an anterior sacral tilt. So, um, so that's what I treat all like basically everybody that comes to me. I have, you know, people that come from me all over uh, and they all have the same symptoms. They all have the same symptoms, the same story. They failed everything. They've been to physical therapist, chiropractic, ejection, surgery, orthopedic surgeon, neurosurgeon, x-ray, MRI, massage, acupuncture. Uh, it's the story. I call it the story. In fact, when I just flip open a chart um, and I take the patient back, all I have to do is look off where they marked off their low back uh, or their leg or whatever, and how long they've had it. If they've had it for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, something like that, I know what it is before I even evaluate them because they've usually failed everything and everybody missed this because it doesn't show up on x-rays and MRIs. We are going to take a quick break to tell you about our awesome new program called the Sciatica Protocol. If you don't have the time to see a professional, but are tired of trying to figure out this recovery on your own, then the sciatica protocol is for you. Harness the power of a knowledgeable physical therapist through your phone. It takes no more than seven minutes per day, and it is designed to help you recover as quickly as possible. It is simple to start, and all you need to do is log into ifixyoursciatica.com forward slash the dash sciatica dash protocol and fill out the nine question quiz to begin. The link for the program is in today's show notes. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you for sharing that. Um, really eye-opening to be able to see the all the patients that you work with, the majority of the patients that you work with present with these like two clinical signs and positioning of the, 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 the SI joint itself. Um, a question for you. So you've seen this with your patients and the the left upslip outflare and compression. What are the what are the common causes of that? Is it due to postural stuff? Is it the way that they move, the way that they stand? Like what why would someone get into a position like this? Yeah, so it's the most common question I'm asked is why did this happen to me? I have seen it in FA 18 Super Hornet fighter pilots. I have seen it in moms, dads seven-year-olds, nine-year-olds, 
15 year olds, um, everybody from literally every job and every walk of life. So I can't blame it on an occupation. I can't say, oh, well, you, you know, you usually like a car dealer gets carpal tunnel all the time. I can't blame it on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I actually believe, like I know what muscle imbalance causes it, but I'm not sure why at this point they're developing that. I'm, I'm working with electromagnetic fields and I'm starting to figure out that these people have a weakness in, in their electromagnetic field around their, around their hips and this inherent weakness. And I think that that on a fundamental level is what is causing it. I'm going to come up with a method that proves this electromagnetic field stuff, but um, I'm still working with the method right now. Uh, But that fundamentally, that's what caused it. But if you strengthen the muscles enough, it doesn't matter. You can still strengthen the muscles to, to, um, you know, to normalize the muscle strength and help realign this to the, to the proper state. Yeah. And, um, and this is really more so the point of curiosity is like you're, you're seeing patients across the entire gamut of both age and also physical capability. Um, is it possible uh, for people to like to be to present with the left upslip alpha and compression? Like, is it is it possible to have this and, and not have any pain at all? Yeah, actually, I call it the silent killer because I had this one girl. Uh, I'll never forget her. She was 14. She had been to literally every ologist that you've ever thought of. Immunologist. Uh, her symptoms were she couldn't sit up uh, for go from like when she was lying on her back to sitting up with her feet like stretched out. She couldn't do it, right? Um, and yet she had five out of five strength everywhere. And I'm sitting there and I'm scratching my head. She had been told that she her parents, they, they both went to West Point. They were very smart. And they told their parents that this little girl was crazy. Uh, and she was making it all up on them. And she'd been to like cardiologists, you name it. They didn't know what to do, right? The biggest hospitals in the world. Anyway, she comes to me and I'm like, you know, I'm like, you've never had back pain? She's like, no. And I'm like, ever? No. And I'm like, well, it's probably not SI joint dysfunction, but let me check. So I checked and I opened up her SI joints and I pulled on her leg, gapped it open. And she sat right up for the first time in years and it was like and all her pain in her groin was gone that that she had this groin pain that nobody could figure out um and she coaches my kid now so <laughs> so it's kind of a cool story coaches That's in really soccer cool. so. yeah and so um w- one last question before we start wrapping things up but i think uh one thing that i'm very curious of because i think everyone is kind of like well why does this work in the first place and so what do you think are like the the two big mechanisms or from what you found, like after treating these patients for years and years and years and with your methods, what, um, how would we describe the mechanism of why this works? Well, it pulls you back into normal anatomical alignment. So um, the muscles, so once I, once I identified the imbalance, that was the same across the board uh, with, with like basically everybody with this chronic back pain, they have an upslip, an outflare, on one side, out flare of their pelvis on the other side, and their sacrum is always rotated with my my uh, my left thumb dipping, uh, meaning that there it's called a uh, so when it rotates rotates like that, so my left thumb would dip if the person was uh, prone on the mat, and therefore I just strengthen the right piriformis muscle and it brings it back usually in about five weeks. So each exercise is designed to fix this pelvic obliquity. Um, and sacral obliquity. So I, you know, that's what I published and, um, and teach in my courses and everything. Yeah. That makes a ton of sense. I think, um, just as I was like going through what you've written, um, I'm thinking, okay, well, what, what could be things that could be contributing? And I, and I, and, and this is the majority of the patients that I see they're right-handed. They have a tendency when they're standing to actually push their left hip out towards the side. So it kind of like perpetuates that kind of same motion. And, and this is just one example of what I've seen, just kind of recollecting in regards to the patients I'm working there, or if they're carrying something on that side too. So it's really exciting to hear um, your thoughts and, and the way that you you found this. And it's uh, it's great. And I'm a huge fan of your work. I really respect what you do. And the listeners out there, and I know that you only have a little bit of time left, but the listeners out there are probably thinking, okay, I want to, I want to be able to uh, break free from this pain. No one has looked at my SI joint either lately or hasn't looked at it at any point. So what are some action steps that you recommend them take um, upon listening to this episode? Okay. So what I recommend is to take my papers 
either I recommend seeing one of my uh, like people that have taken my online courses uh, or that I've trained. Um, and I'm working on a website to get a provider list up, but you can always call my office. Uh, you can Google um, Sport and Spine Physical Therapy in Tampa, Florida, and or email um, or email um, my office. Go to my website. Uh, it's ptandpainrelief.com. Ptandpainrelief.com, and you can uh, ask my assistant to send you a provider. Hopefully, I have one in your area that has taken my course and understands this. Uh, but the other thing you could do if you don't have somebody is you could take my papers on S root cause of SI joint dysfunction and the root cause of sacral torsion shear and anterior sacral tilt and bring that to a provider and tell them to do it to a T. Okay. And bear in mind that this is an average of a five to eight week process, but I just discharged two people that took over four and a half months. Uh, so this can take a long time. And you have to get safely aggressive with the groin strengthening. That's the, the upslip will stabilize first in the sacral rotation. Stabilizes usually in five weeks. And then what you're dealing with after that is groin weakness. So uh, people need to increase weight. I, I put an author's note in my uh, root cause of SI joint dysfunction paper. Um, so describing exactly the steps, how to do it. Um, but this isn't something you try. It's something you do till the pain goes away. Like a lot of people are just like, oh, I'm going to try it. No, it's not going to work. It takes two to six weeks to even start noticing a difference in this rehab. Okay. Now, if you actually have true sciatica and have a nerve pain coming down your leg, if you pull too hard with those stretches, you'll flare it up. Okay. Uh, it's like doing nerve gliding to somebody with, with a herniated disc. So, um, so if you pull too hard, you'll flare it up. So I recommend being very gentle with the stretches. So work with somebody that's trained, hopefully in it from me, or, you know, you know, push comes to shove, you can take it to somebody and say, can we do this together? You know, can you read this guy's paper and evaluate me like this, pull on my leg, gap open my SI joint. I have videos on my YouTube channel on how to do it for free. Uh, and, um, people become pretty well versed in it. Awesome. Listeners out there, if you didn't uh, get a chance to write all that stuff down, um, Dr. Walton's information and contact and all that stuff will actually be found in the show notes. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Um, I know that you're a busy guy treating everything and also doing the research and building all this stuff. So I'm really appreciative of this. And uh, I'm very, very confident that this will help out our listeners as well. Yeah, awesome. If you got back pain nobody can figure out, this is probably it. I'm telling you. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you got some help from today's podcast. And for more info, check us out at ifixyoursciatica.com. Have a fantastic and pain-free day. No patient-therapist relationship is formed by listening to this podcast. We are not providing medical advice and all information should be confirmed by a medical provider.